Marcelo Zuna comes through in the ninth inning yet again. We got a Dinger Tuesday winner and a lot of baseball to talk about. Let's go. What's going on, everyone? Welcome back in to another episode for Just a Bet Outside. I'm your host, Steven, and we're here to talk some more baseball. We got a 16-game slate. That's right. Uh, Marcelo Zuna, how about that? Another ninth inning hit to cash the hitter parlay. Unfortunately, that was the only win. We went one and two on our best bets. Again, we went three and oh on our leans. At some point, I might just beg the whole only best bet segment and just give you all the picks I like because I'm hitting a ton of these leans and it's just driving me crazy. And I know you guys really just care about what the exact best bets record is. Um, but man, I should have put some of those leans as best bets, that's for sure. But uh, Anyways, that's what we got. We got a Dinger Tuesday winner. We don't have to do a showdown. We don't have a tiebreaker. We have a flat out winner. Congrats to at Rolling Dice 3336. He hit Lourdes Guriella plus 600 to win the Dinger Tuesday contest. Uh, two other people had Bryce Harper, and then but Guriel took it over. We had a lot of guys actually not hit home runs today, um, but uh, that was a nice win at plus 600. Congratulations on winning the $20 and the second annual weekly i mean dinger tuesday so that was awesome um so i'll reach out to you and get you paid so we'll do it again next week of course but just a quick reminder nba best bets video is out now go check it out we went two and zero to start the play in tourney and we got two more best bets for the wednesday games but i'm ready to get right into it and it starts with a baseball fun fact here we go joe dimaggio had 361 home runs and only 369 strikeouts that is bonkers. And actually, he had more home runs than K's heading into his final season. I mean, th that many K's is like a season for Joey Gallo or almost anybody in the MLB now. Obviously, a little dramatic, but not that far off. Um, that's just absolutely wild to have similar strikeouts and home runs. But it's a new time, obviously. But anyways, in this video, we're going to recap yesterday. We're going to give you hitter matchups. I know it's Wednesday. You're supposed to be giving you who's on fire last seven days. We're moving that to Thursday. Super busy day for uh, me and Ryan both just watching kids late into the day, but uh, we'll get you that on Thursday. And then good pitcher strikeout matchups, pitcher report, best bets, and then, of course, we'll wrap it all up with the bets recap. Hit that like button. Leave a comment below like you guys have been doing every freaking day. You guys are incredible as we're now on our way to 24,000 subscribers. If you're new, hit that subscribe button. Join this awesome community. All right, let's get started. And, of course, that starts with the recap. All right, there it is. We hit the hitter parlay. Fernando Tatis on his first pitch, on his first at-bat, got a hit. Marcelo Zuna waited for the very last pitch that he saw to get a hit in the ninth inning. Unbelievable cash there. Um, it happened. I was worried about it. Someone made a comment about it. I badmouthed Hunter Brown, and apparently um, the Braves couldn't score off him. But guess what the Braves did do? Still scored six runs. So if you took their over team total in the entire game, you won because they scored in the ninth inning. They didn't care about the first seven innings as much. They scored in the ninth inning. They got to six runs, I believe. Um, Hunter Brown had three Ks. It's not like he just, I think he was three, maybe four. Um, he didn't exactly dominate. They just didn't get many good hits. That's just all it was. It's just one of those games in baseball. Um, and the Giants' money line, my freaking goodness. Up two to zero, and the Marlins had the pitching advantage, and they just folded. They lost six to three. They couldn't do much offensively the rest of the game. They kept giving up uh, hits and runs. Daily Cruz killed them. It was just ugly, but it's one and two day. We we can move on from that again. Three and zero on the leans. There is a ton of more info in these videos. Um, again, I may just end up giving you, like I said, like maybe five to eight, five to ten of my favorite picks. We're still talking about how we want to do that instead of just doing two to four bets every day and only counting that and tracking and all that, just to give you guys more ideas. Because it's really all about just giving you guys all the info, not exactly which ones I'm picking for a best bet and all that. But anyways, just throwing that idea out. If you have any comments or ideas on it, leave a comment below. We're in this together. So um, the fourth bet, anyways, Royals minus a half a run in the first five innings. Minus 130, game got postponed, so it doesn't matter. But stay tuned for that one. Um, anyways, there we are. We had a couple winning days, and then we just went one and two, lost a unit. We'll get through it. Um, and I have confidence we will bounce back. So there's the overall record. It's a long season, but uh, that's what we got for the recap. And now let's talk some good hitter matchups. All right, surprisingly, with 16 games on the slate, we only got six good hitter matchups for you today. And guess what? It's the Yankee edition. Four of the six are Yankees against Kevin Gaussman. Uh, Judge 10 for 25 with four home runs. 
Giancarlo Stanton, a couple bombs, hitting six for 13. Juan Soto, four for 10 with a bomb. And then Cabrera for the uh, Yankees, three for six, all singles, but still three for six. Um, you know, those ones on the right, six, seven at-bats, it's not a lot, obviously. But, uh, I mean, it's really all about Aaron Judge. And this one, it's pretty impressive. And Gaussman has been struggling. Um, but anyways, those are the hitter matchups. Now, let's talk some arms. And again, surprisingly, only one good pitcher strikeout matchup for today. Uh, we got some interesting pitchers, some first timers, and things like that. So, um, but we got Reed Detmers versus the Tampa Bay Rays. Rays ninth highest K percentage versus lefties this year, twenty four point two percent. Detmers last year, one hundred sixty eight Ks in one hundred forty eight point two innings. But my goodness, has he looked good this year? Holy smokes! How about seven, twelve, and seven strikeouts in three starts versus Baltimore and the Red Sox twice? So. Um, another one, kind of an honorable mention, Bryce Miller of the Mariners against the Reds. Um, Reds, fifth highest K rate versus righties. Uh, Miller has an average K rate, so I didn't quite put it on here, but he has a chance to to have some Ks. Uh, another one also would maybe be Andrew Abbott on the other side versus the Mariners. Mariners haven't struck out a ton versus lefties yet this year, um, but I can see that number going up. So that's just another option as well. So anyways, those are the best pitcher strikeout matchups. And now let's talk the pitcher report. All right, here is page one for the pitcher report, the first eight matchups. Uh, let's just talk a few of them. Max Freed, the lefty for the Braves, needs to be their ace. Cy Young candidate has not looked good. He has an 8.74 ERA in 11.1 innings so far and only 10 Ks and 16 hits given up. Um, obviously, you see all these numbers. These are 2023 numbers. Max Freed, 2.82 expected ERA, 2.5 ERA. Uh, but he's just not been that person. And another person that has been a little different this year, and when I say a little, I mean a lot, Kevin Gaussman. We just talked about all the Yankees that hit well against him. He is struggling this year. He is nowhere near those numbers. He has an 11.57 ERA through three starts. In his last two starts, he gave up five earned runs and six earned runs to the Yankees and the Colorado Rockies. So can he turn it around? We're going to find out. Has a little bit of a velocity issue as well. Uh, actually, the last game, I think it was a little bit better, but uh, he's just getting hit around the ballpark right now. So anyways, that's page one. Then we got some other guys. Severino, you know, he's been decent, a little bit better than those numbers, kind of laboring through five innings every time. Um, Pablo Lopez been getting hit a little bit this year. No pitcher yet for the Orioles in that matchup. Um, but yeah, that's what we got for page one. We still got a few teams that have not announced their pitcher. So um, let's move over to page two now. All right, here is page two, and I'm first going to say those two games on the bottom, those are game one and game two in that order. Uh, game one is not at the end of the day, obviously. It's going to be one of the earlier games. Um, but just want to point that out, game one is with Singer versus Cannon. So uh, best pitching matchup, probably Andrew Abbott versus Bryce Miller there in Seattle. Um, Abbott, 2.60 ERA this year. Miller, 1.96 ERA. Both throwing the ball pretty well. Um, obviously you see those numbers, but they've improved so far this year, small sample size. Um, and then we talked about him already. Reed Detmer's just been rolling. Not only is he just striking out a ton of guys, how about a 1.04 ERA? Um, and we already talked about, he played Boston twice in the Orioles. So it's not like he's playing terrible offenses. Um, no more than one earned run given up in any start this year. So, um, I just want to mention uh, just a few pitchers like this, uh, who have been different than those 23 numbers. And another one is Brady Singer. He has been absolutely unbelievable so far this year. Can he keep it up? We'll find out. Um, he was one of those prospects the Royals have been waiting for and waiting for to take the next step, but more on him later. So anyways, that is page two of the pitcher report. Take a screenshot. If you are new to the channel on the bottom is all the average numbers. So you have something to go off of. You know, if you know, a percentage is actually good or bad or anything like that. So anyways, that's all the research help we got for you today. And now it's time for the best bets. All right, this segment of the show is brought to you by our sponsor, Better Bet. That's BTR Bet, the best place to find, track, analyze, and share your bets. Click that link below in the description and go check it out. All right, this first game takes us out to Chicago. We got the White Sox hosting the Kansas City Royals. Uh, Royals money line minus 192, White Sox money line plus 160 with a total of eight and a half runs. This should not be any surprise because this was an added play and we're just running it back because it got postponed yesterday. Give me the Royals minus a half a run in the first five innings at minus 125 on DK. Um, it's the same starting pitchers, same teams, obviously. So I'm just going to run it back. I liked it yesterday, and I still like it today. Uh, here's my big worry in this game. Maybe I should just give you my big worry in every game. But um, it's a day game. Things can get weird. That's all I'm going to say. Day games are sometimes weird. And uh, so just letting you know on that. 
But still, let's just go over the numbers, and we got to trust the matchup. It's Brady Singer versus Jonathan Cannon. Uh, Brady Singer has been surprisingly awesome, like we just talked about a little bit. 0.98 ERA and 18.1 innings. Just unbelievable. Two of his three starts also were against the Twins and the Astros. I know the Twins have been great this year yet, but still a decent offense. The other start was against this same White Sox team when he went 6.1 innings and gave up two hits. That's right, just two hits. Uh, this White Sox lineup is horrible, um, just terrible. I mean, they've been better when they have actually everyone on the lineup, but Eloy Jimenez is gone, Luis Robert is hurt, Yohan Moncada is hurt, um, and those are their three main players. So the White Sox this year, my goodness, second worst WRC plus versus righties this year is 71, ahead of only the Philadelphia Phillies. That's right, that's no shocker, they've been struggling. Uh, second worst ISO power, so not showing much power uh, with extra base hits, home runs, things like that. Uh, third worst batting average at 204. That's right, only 204. And the fourth worst bat, uh, on base percentage, 277. That is just bad. Um, Jonathan Cannon takes the mound for the White Sox. Nothing special, not a big strikeout guy. Just eh, uh, maybe a fourth or fifth starter in this league if everything works right for him. Uh, making his debut, nothing special that I'm worried about. Um, and now he's facing this Royals lineup. We know they've been playing well. 10th best WRC plus versus righties. That's weighted runs created. The total way of uh, determining how your offense is performing. Um, seventh and ISO power. So obviously they've been hitting some home runs. And you want to know how many? They have the third most home runs off of right-handed pitching this season and the eighth most plate appearances. So um, only the Brewers and the Orioles have more home runs off of righties so far this season. The wind looks like it's blowing out. Always good for a powerful uh, team that hits righties very well. So the Ro uh, Royals in this one, I'm losing my voice right at the end, but the Royals in this one, the much better starting pitcher, the much better starting lineup, and I just need them to be ahead after five innings at only minus 125. I love the value here, so give me the Royals minus a half a run in the first five innings as my first best bet. All right, this second game takes us out to Tampa, Florida. We got Tampa Bay Rays hosting the Los Angeles Angels. Rays money line minus 130, Angels money line plus 110 with a total of eight runs. My best bet in this game, it's the pitcher Zach Littell, over 16 and a half outs recorded at minus 115 on DraftKings. He is the Rays starting pitcher if you do not know that. But what this means is he needs to get two outs in the fifth inning for us to cash. So far this year, he's only gone over this in one of three starts, but he's now pitching back at home. Tampa Bay is a place where offenses have a little bit harder time to hit. Um, Littell just faced these Angels, but it was on the road in his last start. He didn't have great command in that game, and he didn't even make it five innings, but that doesn't mean he can't do it here. He's now back at home where he has been much better. We just saw Aaron Savali do the same thing yesterday. He threw against the Angels for the second time in a row, and yesterday he pitched much better. He had like seven or eight Ks after striking out only four in L.A., um, and so um, you saw it already with him, and now Zach Littell has to do the same thing. And what has he done at home? Well, he's gone over this outs recorded line in five of his last six home games. I think it's a great bounce back spot. He walked three guys. He doesn't do that. He has an absolutely elite walk rate. It's like it was last year was like around four percent. Um, this year it's been a little higher so far. I think he's going to get his command back. Being back at home will help. Um, in that hitter's park, it's an eight run total for a reason. Um, so anyways, now let's talk about some other reasons. I like it. One, one other one, Angels offense been average against righties. They're nothing special. Um, they do draw the seventh fewest walks. So they're not a super patient offense, which you like to see. You don't want to see that pitch count be drawn up. Um, and, uh, but I did just find the walk number on my notes. Finally, um, Last year, Latell had a 3.2% walk rate. Absolutely elite. I know it was last year. It's been a little bit different this year, but I think he bounces back, throws more strikes, and uh, is a little more efficient this round. Um, another reason I really, really like this bet. These two teams just played a 13-inning game yesterday. That's right. It was an absolute marathon. How does that help, you ask? Well, first, some Angel starters in the lineup may sit out because they just played a long game. Maybe. If they don't, that's okay. But the second and most important, the Rays' bullpen was just used a lot yesterday, which means they're going to need Latell to go deep into this game. He's going to be given a long leash. They're not going to want to just yank him quickly and go to the bullpen because, like I said, they just used a lot of the bullpen guys. And in Latell's last start, he threw 99 pitches. So he is well stretched out. I wouldn't be surprised if they let him go 95-plus as long as he is pitching pretty decent. So give me Zach Latell. Over 16 and a half outs recorded to go over this for the sixth time in his last seven home starts as my second best bet. All right, this third game takes us out to Oakland. We got the A's hosting the St. Louis Cardinals. 
Cardinals money line minus 155. A's money line plus 130 with a total in this game of only eight runs. I'm going to take you down to Nerfie Town, baby. That's right. Give me the Nerfie in this game between the Cardinals and the A's at minus 120 on DraftKings. I'm only putting a half unit on it right now uh, for this game. It doesn't mean it's my least favorite Nerfie or anything like that. I just I think I'm just going to do half unit on Nerfies unless I absolutely love it. Um, but first, it's in Oakland, which is known for suppressing runs big time. That's why you see a total of only eight eight runs. But uh, let's talk about this one real quick. Two struggling offenses. Cardinals, 22nd in runs scored. Oakland A's are 29th. Uh, both teams in the bottom half of the league in scoring first inning runs. So that's obviously important. Does it matter? I don't really know. It's just one inning, so you need some luck. Um, but the pitching matchup, we got the lefty Steven Matz versus Paul Blackburn. If you have not seen how these guys have been pitching, Steven Matz surprisingly good so far. How about a 1.80 ERA in 15 innings this year? Paul Blackburn, um, I see your 1.80 ERA, and I raise you to 0, 0, 0 in 19.1 innings, as good as it gets right now. That means these two pitchers have combined to pitch a total of 34.1 innings and three earned runs given up all by Matz. I mean, it's just absolutely insane. Struggling offenses, two pitchers in really good form, a great hitter at ballpark. Um, I just like the nerfy. Give me the nerfy in this game. I just need six up, six down. Um, but that's what I got for my third best bet. Um, I'm going to add a play or two in the morning. Um, not all the props are out. I haven't I haven't found all the props for batter props and things like that. Um, I'll probably drop another hitter parlay and then maybe one other bet as well. But those are the three bets we got for you tonight. Um, hopefully we can get some more winners, get that sweep, and get rolling again. So anyways, let's check out the bets recap. All right, there it is. The Royals minus a half a run in the first five innings at minus 125. And then we got Zach Littell of the Rays over 16 and a half outs recorded, minus 115. And then the Nerfy. That's right, baby. Let's get back on track with the Nerfies. We've had a winning record so far this year. Um, and the Cardinals in the A's game, I'm putting a half unit on that. Again, there will be at least one, maybe two added plays in the morning. We got day baseball. It's going to be a ton of fun. Uh, but again, if you don't know where they are, some people have asked that any added plays will be in the pinned comments um, under this video. It will be on Discord and it will be on X as well. Again, Discord is free. Go click the link and go join. We got a lot of people talking sports every single day. But thank you for the support. I appreciate it. Go check out that NBA video if you haven't. Also, just tap that like button. I appreciate the support. But anyways, hope you have a great Wednesday and we'll talk to you soon.